Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in the last tutorial we looked at getting some JSON from a JSON server and in this tutorial we're going to look at parsing that JSON. So we've seen that if you go to an appropriate URL such as this one from Twitter you can get a, a string of text in a JSON format which looks for example like this. And if I format it with a JSON formatter like this one, then it looks maybe something like this. So it looks a lot better. And now, um, using this as a guide, we can pass that in an Android application. And I've rearranged my Android application a bit last time. So I've given it a text view with a connect button. And when I click connect there, what happens is it goes and gets, it contacts the server at that URL and then just displays the result in the text field. And to do that, I just use standard stuff that we've covered already in the nuts and bolts section of this tutorial. So I won't go over that again, um, but very briefly, I just added a listener to the button and in the async task, we run download HTML and that returns whatever it downloads. And in on post execute, which again we covered this in async tasks previously, I just um, we receive the text there that's downloaded, and that's the JSON formatted text, and I just set it as a text in the text view. So now let's work on parsing that text. And the first thing we need to do is we need to parse it into a JSON, well into a kind of Java data structure, rather than a big string of text. So to do that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll use something, a class called JSON tokener and I can use the constructor, I'll say new JSON tokener and I'll pass in the text that we want to format there and then I'll say next value, call the next, next value method and that hopefully will return, well it will return um, some kind of JSON entity. But let's let's see what. I'm hoping it's going to be a JSON array, but I'm going to say object obj equals new JSON token brackets result dot next value. And let's surround that with try catch as I know it wants to be. And uh, so notice here like I'm I'm using because I only want to use this token once to do the passing once, I'm saying new token and I'm not storing a reference to that object. I'm just call, calling next value. So this object here is not a tokener. It's whatever next value returns. And next value could return. Um, well it's going to return object, but it, the thing that it returns could be a JSON array if the top level object that's passed is a JSON array. It's an array of values. Or it could be a JSON object if the top level um, object will be a hash, but I think that the top level object has to be an array, so but let's just check to be sure. And I'm going to just say here, um, let's say text view dot set text obj dot get class dot to string and see what that does. And I'll, I'll comment this out, I'll comment out the text view dot set text and I'll run that. So um, if, if we look at the JSON while that's loading, I, I already said in the last tutorial it's made up of whoops, arrays and hashes. I didn't actually know you could do that. You can actually expand and contract it, which is quite handy. Um, so, and the arrays are contained, the array elements are contained within these square brackets separated by commas. And within these kind of curly parentheses, you have hashes, key value pairs. And the key value pairs are represented by JSON objects and the array elements, sorry, the arrays themselves are represented by JSON array objects. So it's, it's just like lists and hashes in Java, basically. And uh, this can be a bit, little bit hard to understand to start with, but if you work with it a little bit, you'll, you'll get the idea um, pretty quickly. So I've got my phone up now, it seems to be running. So let's go to the screencast and click connect. And we've got a, hopefully we've got something. Here we go. 
So we've got a JSON array object. And why have we got a JSON array? Because the top level object here is an array. And how do we know that? Because this is a square bracket. And what are the elements in the array? Well, let's find out. And I'm guessing they're hashes because well, I know they're hashes. Um, so, and hashes are represented. Okay, okay hash is kind of like, um, I'm thinking of hash map, basically. I should say they're maps, but a map or a set of key value pairs is represented in JSON by a JSON object. So let's get the first value out of that array. In fact, let's not, let's iterate through the array. That will be more interesting. So I'm gonna to go to Eclipse here, and I'm gonna to go to, so uh, the bit that actually passes, where I actually pass that JSON is here, is here. And I've got back a JSON array object. So now I know that this is gonna be a JSON array. Let's say JSON array. And let's just call this items or something like that. Because um, each item I assume is gonna be a news item, but let's just call it items. And because this next value returns an object, I've got to cast that to the right type, which is JSON array. And I save that. And I'm gonna to have to put brackets around this whole thing, I think. And let's add the import of JSON array there. And there we go. And now we've got JSON array, we can iterate through it. Let's say for uh, object item in items. So I'll just use a for loop to iterate through this. And I'm gonna say, um, I think that works. Oh, okay, it's not iterable. I really thought that worked, but I think I'm getting confused between um, the kind of most common JSON library in Java and this version. Let's try using a for loop instead. So I'm gonna say um, something like for int i equals naught. This is surely bound to work. i less than items dot uh, size, right? It has size, it doesn't have size. I think um, I'm really getting confused. Length, there we go, length. And uh, i plus plus. So if, if you want to pass JSON, not in Android, just search for JSON Java and you'll find a, a jar file library that you can download and that has a load of very, very similar methods in, but I think they're, I think they're not identical because I'm sure that worked, the iteration worked in the, the other version. Well, I'm not completely sure, I think it did. Okay, let's try this. And I'm gonna, so I'm gonna get the items out one by one. I'll say items.get and pass in the index there. And uh, let's say object and item equals items.get i. So I'm iterating over all the, the items in this JSON array with this for loop. And let's just do here something like text view dot append and item dot get class dot to string and I think append doesn't write a new line so let's let's write a new line after that at this and I'm going to run that if there are no errors which they don't seem to be and now what is any guesses as to what is what is going to be the class of each item well there's, there's only two possibilities, JSON array and JSON value. And uh, we, we don't expect to have mixed and matched values in an array. I don't think that's allowed in JSON. I hope not anyway. So the, the, they're probably all gonna have the same type. And if we just look at the JSON here, so if I go to the browser here, we can see that we've got a curly bracket here and a curly bracket means a map, a set of key value pairs which means JSON value rather than JSON array. So the elements, this is an array and the elements in the array are JSON values. So I expect that we're gonna see JSON value coming back here. And let's see if I'm correct. And let's go to the emulator here, the screencast, sorry, and click connect. And we'll see what comes back. And there we go, JSON. Did I say JSON value? I meant JSON object. So we've got JSON objects and 
JSON arrays, JSON objects and JSON arrays. Okay. Um, so now I can get the JSON objects. It's really JSON values stuck in my brain for some reason. I can get the JSON objects and um, from each of those I can retrieve these key value pairs. And there's not too much more complexity to this. So I should be able to ret retrieve this headline, the text here, directly from each object. Let's try to do that now. Um, so, so now I know that each item is a JSON object. I can say here, JSON object. And this, this would break if the format of the JSON supplied by Twitter in this case changed. So you could do, you could do, um, if object instance of JSON object and then pass it that way. But, um, since your application is going to be useless anyway, if the format changes, I think I'll, I'll be content just to assume that it is a JSON object and proceed on that basis. So let's say JSON object, uh, well, I could call it item still, couldn't I? JSON object item equals items.get and cast that to a JSON object and add the import for JSON object. And let's say string title equals item. And now I can use item dot get string. And um, because I can get key value pairs from this, if I look at the actual JSON, one key that it's got is text. So I could get all the titles from it using this text key. And uh, clearly this is a string. I know it's a string because it's in double quotes. Whereas that is um, an integer, I suppose, or a long, um, but this is a string. So let's do get string and retrieve that. I think that's what I want. Let's just have a quick look down. There's nothing more interesting. Here is an example of a key which has as its value another JSON object, another map, in other words. So you can have arrays within arrays within maps within maps within arrays and so on. You get the idea, I think, probably, or you will do after you've looked at it a bit. Okay, uh, and let's just finish this off by getting the text key here. So I, I type text in there and I'm just going to say text view dot append title and then append a new line. So this should get me five titles of headlines from the onions Twitter feed. And um, if, if you, this is kind of quite confusing the first time you, you see it. And uh, as, as always, I strongly recommend just working through this yourself step by step. And you'll, hopefully you'll see what I'm doing and you'll get the idea of maps within arrays, within maps and so on. And you'll, you'll see how you can tell if it's an array because of the square bracket. And if it's a, uh, a JSON object, it's going to be a curly bracket and so on and you'll, you'll get the idea of it but it, it can sometimes take a little bit of working through before the penny drops I find. So let's take a look here. I'm, um, I'm holding my phone in my hand and trying to get it the right way up and there we go and I'll click the connect button and there we go. There are a bunch of titles from The Onion. Um, yeah formatting is not great but that's because I mean that genuinely is the stuff that was in there so um, we've achieved our aim and there you go okay so uh, that's that's enough for this tutorial and I'm, I'm not going to dwell much more I don't think on passing JSON because that's more or less all there is to it and you just need to get the hang of this and it is a bit tedious but um, the results can be quite interesting as you can see so I'll leave it there for now and until next time, happy coding.